This fall, I was so fortunate to get to enjoy some time in the display of quilts at International Quilt Festival, and I found myself drawn to several quilts that were strip quilts or quilt as you go quilts, and I had to create one to teach you how to do it. Let's get started. Quilt as you goes are just that, quilt as you go. So you're gonna need a couple of things. Let's start with what will be the quilt top. These are timeless treasures. It was a two and a half inch strip pack, but I specifically chose from a 40 piece collection with all 40 fabrics different because we're gonna take those two and a half inch strips and we're gonna cut them down so that they're one and a quarter by the 44 as we begin working. Before I teach you how to do that, you'll also probably need a good rotary cutter ruler today. And I want you to have your backing and your batting ready to go before we even start cutting these down. So with your backing and your batting, you're gonna figure out how many strips you're gonna use. If you're making one and a quarter inch strips, multiply that number of strips by 0.75, and that will be the number of inches you need to make your backing and your batting, and then add four inches in length to that anyways, just so you have a little bit of wiggle room. So I have enough batting and enough backing here to do the whole distance of the quilt, the size behind me, but I've also folded it in half, very crisp, and I've drawn this black line you see through here, and that black line is gonna be my first seam allowance, and it's drawn on the batting, not on the backing, okay? So, now that that's all established, let's talk about how we're gonna organize our color strips for building the quilt, and like I said, we're just gonna quilt as we go. Now, when I looked through the stash, I was drawn to it because there were 40 different pieces, but I was also drawn to it because I loved the bright colors in here. So as I figured and looked through it, I realized how big did I want this, I was able to omit actually about six strips, so I chose the blacks, grays, and darker browns because they didn't fill into that bright family. See how that just changes the design just like that? Set these aside. You'll use them for the binding as you can see on the quilt there behind me. Now. Once you do that, I wanna also stack these up in a color gradient, and I'm gonna work, for, work from light to dark, primarily just as they come off of the order, but you can make changes as you go. So like I'm gonna take my light cream, then the next darker, and as I stack these about five at a time, I'm gonna stack them perfectly so that I can cut them when I'm done. Okay, so then the next would be the lighter of the purple shades. Okay. And let's just do four strips. Four strips is pretty easy to cut. It's still eight layers. Build all of your strips in color order first, then come back in here and prepare to cut down your strip, okay? Now, we want these as accurate as possible because we're using this cut edge as our seam allowance. So just take a second, look down your strips, make sure they're nice and clean. And then I'm gonna set my ruler on an edge and I'm looking at the one and a quarter inch mark. One and a quarter inch mark out here, so I'm gonna cut and leave a one, one quarter inch strip as well. A Little bit of pressure, and away we go. Oops, slide a little bit, that's okay. And I wanna be careful not to come off the end of the mat. That is a very good way to dull your blades, is to come off of your mat. So if you ever get in a situation like I am, grab it, Grab it like this. I'm in the selvages, so it doesn't matter, but I don't ever want to cut off of my mat. That's a good example to teach you there. Okay, now I've got my pieces all set up. And again, do it to your entire pile, but I'm gonna set these out of the way so I can show you how to sew it. And then we are starting on our middle strip. Whatever color you want for your middle strip, that's the one we're gonna have. Now, we have technically two of every color. So we're going to also omit one more piece of fabric Gone it is, okay, and now we have one of our very lightest, and that will get sandwiched in between those two next lightest. That's a terrible term, but you know what I mean. Now, in order to make it work and facilitate for our sewing, clean out my area a little bit, move these over here, and now I'm gonna lay this out flat. This is my batting and my backing again, and I think I forgot to mention, I did safety pin based lightly the batting to the backing, okay, like this. Now I'm gonna take the straight edge from my first lightest strip, and I'm laying it here along that black line, 
Okay, then I'm gonna take one of those next shaded strips, also set it so I have my clean cut straight line right through there. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna do something you probably have never seen me ever do on man sewing before. That's right, I'm gonna use a few pins today because it's such a big piece, I don't want things to move around, I'm just gonna slide a pin or two in place while I get myself over to the sewing machine. Once I'm at the sewing machine, the black line and the straight edges will be my guide. I don't need the pins to keep it all secure, but I want it just to make sure I can get there nicely, okay? Now as we head over to the machine, leave this last strip out, I'm gonna show you how to put that one on here in a second too. Now, I'm doing a quarter inch seam allowance, but I can't use one of my edge guides like I normally do because the edge guide will be hidden on the bed and we're now sewing in the middle of the field, okay? If you have a walking foot for your machine, this might be a good time to use that. If you have a dual feed on your machine, this would be a great time to use that. Keeping all these layers sewing with your feed dogs nicely. Now, I'm just taking a second to breathe. Ah, slow down. And we're gonna just line all of this up where I can see my presser foot width, which happens to be about a quarter inch. That black line, my machine's in a needle down mode, and we're gonna get started here. So now as I'm coming, I'm just watching that black line and those two straight lines. Another reminder is I never wanna sew over the pin, so I'm taking the pins out now. And you might notice I'm also kinda just keeping the weight of all of the fabric and the batting up on the table here as I go through. Okay, now as I'm coming into the end here, I'm just gonna finish that off. You can backstitch if you like, but we will trim our edges clean when we're all finished, okay? Now we're gonna go over to the ironing board. And I was thinking as I was sitting there sewing, gosh, I wonder if it really matters if you use 100% cotton batting. I always have because I'm gonna be ironing on the top where the batting is exposed to the heat of the iron. I'm not too concerned, but I certainly wouldn't be using fusible batting at this point, so. Just a quick little reminder. Now, my fabrics were set right sides together, so I'm just gonna come down the center here and press this open. As I'm going, I don't mean my seams, I'm sorry, I mean the uh, two fabrics I just created. You can't press your seams open really this way because you are quilting as you go. And that quilting as you go term really means just that. I have stitched now through the layers of fabric and the batting and the backing. So when I am all done, if you look at the quilt closely behind me, you'll see there's no additional machine quilting whatsoever. Not that you couldn't add it, but I just didn't need to because everything was already all structured as I was finished, which makes a wonderfully easy and great project. Now, back to our design, okay? Our center strip is our bright strip. So the next one I wanted to lay in here is this cream color strip. Truthfully, you can add in either direction. For me, I like to build, like what I'm machine quilting, from the center outward. So I'm gonna sew on this next strip as well as I go. So I have to check. I've got a few basting pins that may get in the way. I've already secured the fabric by stitching it, so I can now remove this center row of basting pins and continue to add on a row after a row after a row. I'm gonna show you how to get started on this, but I wanna talk a little bit more about the quilt in the background. So I'm just gonna get you started here. So on this one, I like to match up my pinked edges. So I'm gonna go right sides together. So I've gotta spin it around. So I'm now right sides together here. And I'm gonna go right over here to my machine. Sometimes it helps to get a little bit of the extra fabric out of the way. Slide it in because it's most comfortable, most convenient like that. Bring it back up here to the top. And now, like I said, I can just use that nicely pressed piece of fabric to start with. Right here. <laughs> did you catch what I just did? I bet you did. Now, technically, I know my foot's a quarter inch on either side, but that's not how you would do it at home, is it? Sorry about that. We're just going to spin it because I was gonna sew on the wrong side of my presser foot. And a lot of us have a cool quarter inch foot, but it's only a quarter inch on the right hand side of the foot. So 
If you were wondering if I was noticing that, no, I didn't notice that. But I did when I got ready to start sewing. Okay, here we go again. So I've got my pinked edge lined up to my pinked edge. I'm gonna do my standard quarter inch as I know it there. And get started. And then as I continue to sew through here, like I said, I just do this as business as usual, but there's something important I wanna point out in the quilt. You're handling a lot of mass while you're doing that. So about every six or seven strips, what I would do is I would come and I would measure how it was going. So I would start in the center and I'm gonna flip my ruler up so I can kind of use it. So like, let's say we just take from this blue to this blue strip and I can see that it's six inches right there in the center. But then I'm going to come out to the edge and I'm going to measure again and I'm praying and crossing my fingers that it's also six inches, but it isn't always. I'll tell you, it wasn't for me. And same on the other edge. What I found is about every seven or eight strips, I might get off by a half of an inch, a quarter of an inch across the whole body of it. I do not want you to try to cheat and fix it in one strip. Take a couple of strips, figure out where you're running a little bit wider and narrow it in and it works beautifully because as you look at the quilt behind me, they look like they're running perfectly parallel, but now you know my secret, right? There's a few that weren't perfect, but that's okay because as my dear friend Jenny Doan says, finished is always better than perfect and there is no faster way to make a quilt than quilting as you go. So I hope you certainly enjoyed this tutorial today. I had a blast making it. Before I let you go though, I'm gonna remind you, don't forget to put those binding strips around the edge and we'll catch you next time right here at Man Sewing. Thanks for being a Man Sewing fan. It's great to have you out there encouraging me to create fantastic new content. If you've missed any of the videos, we've got links for you here and here. And while you're checking those out, make sure you're subscribed. We don't want you to miss any of the action. 